Okay, so we still have about three minutes. So I'm not going to start anything yet, but can you all see me and hear me? Can you let me know if you can see the document that's here, this one here that's moving? Um, if you can see that, okay, and if you can hear me. Okay, thanks, Will. And is the document you're seeing reversed or is it readable like the way it should be? Because on my screen <clears throat> on YouTube, it always comes in backwards. Thanks, guys. Great, thank you. Okay, so we'll wait about two more minutes and um, we'll begin. You take notes if you need to. Um, the video is going to, um, so after the live stream ends, then YouTube uh, converts it. And after a little bit, then it'll be up on the website. So you can access it at any time to take notes if you like. Yeah, just make sure you guys put your first and last name if you've got a YouTube name. So that way, um, <clears throat> when I go through the chat for attendance, I can mark you as present. Hi, Emma. Okay, so it's 11 o'clock. So you guys all doing okay? Everybody's safe. Everybody's good. Everybody's ex uh, enjoying their extended break. Okay, so just as in class, I'll take that as a yes. <laughs> um, okay, we're going to go ahead and get started. <clears throat> At about noon, I believe, WebAssign will release your assignment that's going to go with this lesson. So you can do that. And uh, it'll be due by the next time we meet, which will be on Wednesday at 11. So let's get started because I do have another one to do by 1 o'clock. <clears throat> I know being in school would be much easier. But um, it is what it is, right? Okay, so... We're going to go into section 6.3 because we need to move on. I don't know if you guys are going to have a semester exam. We don't know nothing yet. So um, anyway, I'm just going to move on in the curriculum. Um, you can find us on page 416 in your textbook. Okay. And the objectives are the following. We're going to represent vectors as directed line segments. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, write component form, write the component form of a vector, perform vector operations, and find the direction angle of a vector. Okay, so it's kind of lengthy. There's a there's quite a few pages here. And uh, um, anyway, it's going to be a lot. All right, just giving you a forewarning. So 
So some of you know about vectors and some of you maybe have never learned about vectors. So they're, they're not difficult um, at all for what you guys have to learn. So let's get started. So a vector is just a directed line segment and it has magnitude or length. So magnitude is just a fancy word for length and it has direction. So maybe this vector here, okay, um, it has a starting point, which is called the initial point, and an ending point, which is called the terminal point, okay? And the terminal point always has the arrow, and that's not a very good arrow there, but uh, it always has an arrow <clears throat> at the um, terminal point. And we call the initial point the tail, and the uh, terminal point the head. And if this is point A, I can think of the coordinates of A as A sub 1 comma A sub 2. And for point B, I could think of those as B sub 1, B sub 2. All right, vectors are denoted in boldface letters, little lowercase boldface letters without the little vector on top. But we can't write in bold, so we put the little vector on top. And sometimes I just get sick of it. If we're working in the context of vectors, I don't put the little symbol on the top. So um, anyway, uh, we can name uh, the, the three most common names for vectors are U, V, and W, but they could be named anything. And we can also um, name them by their initial and terminal points. So like this picture here, I could call this vector AB. Now the length or the magnitude of a vector is denoted with this double barred bracket here. So you put your named vector inside and you just enclose it with those little double bars. Um, it's just the distance formula. <clears throat> okay, so if I wanted to find the length of, you know, the distance between this point and this point, it's the distance formula. So it's b sub 2 minus a sub 1 quantity squared plus b sub 1 minus a sub 1 quantity squared. And um, I can find the length of the vector. And to find the direction of the vector, well, that's just the slope of this line or this part of a line, which is we're calling a vector. Okay, so the slope formula, you know, you know it is y2 minus uh, y1 over um, x2 minus x1, the change in y over the change in x. Well, we're using a and b for our x's and y, so. Um, anyway, you can think of these as x, y if you like to when we get into the plane. <clears throat> so the notation is just a little bit different, but you can think of it as, you know, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. So the change in y over the change in x would be good. All right, very important. Two vectors are equal if and only if they have both the same magnitude and the same direction. So equal vectors are parallel because they have the same slope. Any questions so far? Okay, furthermore, we have something called the zero vector, which is denoted by either a bold zero or a zero with the little vector over it. And the magnitude of the zero vector is zero, okay? Also, if the magnitude of any vector that you find is 1, we call that the unit vector, which, by the way, was removed from your curriculum. So that was interesting, trying to plan a lesson without talking about unit vectors. But um, anyway, you'll see what happens. Okay? All right. So... this in the screen here. Uh, who knows why it was removed? It just was. So anyway, if I have to supplement, I will. Can I go back? You can go back when you replay the video. Okay, the video will be up forevermore once the live stream ends. So an example that you might see in your homework or on your district exam if you have one, is you're given an initial point and a terminal point, and they want you maybe to find um, whether or not this vector u is equivalent to another vector v. So for vector u, we have the initial point 2, 2, and the terminal point negative 1, 4. 
And for vector v, we have the initial point negative 3, negative 1 with a terminal point of negative 5, negative 2. Uh, sorry, positive 2. And the question is, are they equivalent vectors? Well, the first thing you want to do is find the magnitude of each vector. So for vector u, I put it in here. Now, I wrote this out extensively because it's on video, so that way kids can use it to help them. But I want you to be really careful with your signs. Remember, if the signs are the same, you're going to add and keep the same sign. And if the signs are different, you're going to subtract and use the sign of the bigger number. So go ahead and, you know, um, using the distance formula. So I've got negative 1 minus 2 quantity squared plus 4 minus 2 quantity squared. And if I clean up what's in here, a negative 1 and a negative 2, the signs are the same. I add and keep the same sign. I get a negative 3 squared. Nice thing is, is that any negative number, when you square it, don't forget, becomes positive. So we've got negative 3 squared plus 2 squared. If I square that, I get 9 plus 4, or the square root of 13. And then I have to find the magnitude of the other one, because remember, two vectors are equal if and only if they have the same magnitude and the same direction. So finding the magnitude of V, I did the same thing. I put the initial and terminal components or points in um, to the distance formula, cleaned it up, and I got 13. So, so far, so good, right? Root 13. So the magnitudes are the same. Now I have to show that the slopes are the same or the direction of the vector. So if I find the slope of vector U, I've got 4 minus 2 over negative 2 minus 1, so that gives me, I mean, negative 1 minus 2, that gives me negative 2 thirds. If I find the slope of a vector v, well, I get negative 3 halves. So the slopes are not the same. So my magnitudes are the same, but the direction is not. So therefore, I would say that vector u does not equal vector v. Is that okay? Are you guys not going to? Oh, okay. Thank you. Who is hello there? I need, I mean, you may have already signed in under your real name, but um, remember that I need your real names if you have a YouTube channel handle uh, for attendance purposes. So I don't know who hello there is. And if you don't, um, tell me what your real name is, then I'm going to have to remove you from the channel. Okay, Lauren, you're good. All right. A geometric representation, you know, it says use the diagram below, so you might get a picture on your homework. Use the diagram below to determine whether the vectors are equivalent. Now, you might say, well, they're parallel, so they are, but you're going to have to show it, all right? So, Again, we're going to find the magnitude of vector RS and the magnitude of vector PQ. And I went ahead and did that down here. And by the way, all the magnitudes do not always equal root 13. These were just the examples from the book, and they just so happened to, um, they just so happened to turn out to be root 13. So anyway, I found the magnitude of vector RS, the magnitude of vector PQ. And the magnitudes are the same, so it looks like I'm in uh, on a good track here. And then I have to find the direction. So I have to see if the slopes are the same. And I found the slope for vector RS, right? So again, let me just get this in here. The slope of this line is the change in Y, so 4 minus 2 divided by the change in X, which is 4 minus 1, right? So I've got that here, and I get a slope of 2 thirds. And likewise, for this vector PQ, if I do... 2 minus 0 over 3 minus 0, I get 2 thirds again. And so since the magnitudes are the same and the slopes are the same, that means they have the same direction, then I can say that the two vectors are equivalent. So far so good?
Yes, Nick, they would. Moving right along then. What we're interested in is the component form of the vector because that makes them nice and easy to work with and to write. So the component form of a vector is just an ordered pair that describes the changes in the x and y values. So if I have a vector with an initial point at the origin, which is always what we want, then we call that a position vector because they're nice and easy to work with. So Jaden, well, I don't mind you saying hi. Remember, we're keeping our um, conversations with each other to a minimum because I have to go through this chat transcript and submit it to admin for your attendance. So we're not supposed to be having conversations with each other on the chat. Um, a position vector can be represented by its terminal point, which is really, really nice. In other words, let me make a little... If I have this position vector here, I'll call it A at the origin and B here. And let's just say point B is uh, 3, 2. Well, I can write this as a vector with components 3, 2. So whenever our initial point is at the origin, then the stopping point or the terminal point um, represents the vector because 3 minus 0 is 3 and 2 minus 0 is 2. We're going to represent those component vectors with these pointed, I don't know, brackets, I guess you can call them. So whenever you're talking about a vector or whenever you're reading and you see this notation, that means they're talking about a vector. So it says suppose AB was a vector where A has the points A sub 1, A sub 2, and B has the point B sub 1, comma B sub 2 then the component form of this is very easy to find. And it doesn't even have to be just at the origin. You can do it anywhere, but it's b sub 1 minus a sub 1. So, you know, think of subtracting x's if you want to think of this as x, y. And then b sub 2, let me do it down here, minus a sub 2. That's going to give you b sub 1, b sub 2. So just two numbers, and that's going to be your vector v. Furthermore, the magnitude... It's still the distance formula. We're going to say the magnitude of that vector v. All you have to do is take each component, pop it in there, square it, add it together, and you're done. Okay, So that makes it really, really nice if you're working in component form. You don't have to do all the distance formula, the subtraction, and the cleaning it up. Okay, Again, if your vector is the unit vector, it'll have a magnitude of 1. And if it has a magnitude of 0, then it is the 0 vector. Oops. So, in your homework, you're probably going to be asked something to the effect of find the component form and the magnitude of the vector v. It has an initial point 4, negative 7, 7 and a terminal point of negative 1, 5. So, you know, you can let the initial point, you can call it a if you want to. You don't have to call it really anything if you don't want to. And let b be the other point, the terminal point. And so we can find the component for our position b sub 1 by subtracting. So all I'm going to do is take the b sub 1 and subtract from it the a sub 1. So it's negative 1 minus 4. Again, the signs are the same, so we add and keep the same sign. So the first component in this vector is negative 5. And then for the second component, we would do 5 minus a minus 7. The opposite of a negative makes that a positive. And so we get a 12. So in component form, sorry about that. In component form, we'd have that vector v is negative 5, 12. Nice and simple. Okay, so just, just subtract the corresponding components. By the way, over here to the side, I said in component form, two vectors are equal if and only if they have the same component. So if I have a vector u and it's 2, 3, has components 2, 3, and a vector v with components 2, 3, I can say they're equivalent. It's the same vector. Now, the beauty is, is if I want to find the magnitude, well, all I have to do is take each component, square it, put it under the radical, square it, add them together, 
and <clears throat> I'm done. Any questions on the component form of a vector? Good, okay. So I just threw a few little examples up here. <clears throat> we have a vector here in the plane with initial point A, terminal point B, and the points or the coordinates for those points are given here. So if I want to find the component form for vector AB, then it's just 2 minus a minus 2 comma 7 minus 3. And when I clean that up, I get 4, 4. So that would be the component form of the vector AB. Here's another one. Okay, there's a vector in the plane again. It has an initial and a terminal point. And if I want to find the component form of this vector, then I'm just going to subtract the x's, subtract the y's. <clears throat> if you want to think of it that way, you know, clean it up, whether I've got to add or subtract and simplify it. So there's my component form. Another way they may ask you on your homework is perhaps they'll give you, you know, a vector in the plane and they'll ask you to find the component form and the magnitude. And that's not a problem because, by the way, this is a position vector <clears throat> because it starts at the origin, okay, where, uh, let me go back up here. These last two, the initial points were not at the origin, but when the initial point begins at the origin, then it's a position vector. And that's nice because right away, without any work, since I know I'm doing negative 3 minus 0, negative 3 minus 0, I don't even have to think about it. Whatever this point is, that's my, th those are the components of my vector. So my vector is done. And if I want the magnitude, I just have to take each one of those values, put them under the square root, square them, add them together, and I get my magnitude. Here's another position vector. Okay, and this is the point 1, 5 here. So my component form of the vector is 1, 5. And then if I want to find the magnitude of that, all I have to do is take the square root of each component squared, add them together, and I'm done. Capiche? What you're mainly going to be dealing with is you are going to have to find the component form for sure. That was big for semester review topics, but also vector operations. So in other words, you're going to have to multiply, add, and subtract vectors. Those are the three operations you're going to work with. So let's start with multiplication because it's the easiest. So scalar multiplication. A scalar is just a number, a real number, okay, like three or something. And... <clears throat> So, yes, the initial point and the terminal points would be specified. And if they're on a graph, so like, go back. So they'll either tell you what the initial um, and terminal points are, or if it's on a graph, then you can see it, right? Remember, the starting point doesn't have the arrow. So that's always the initial point and, uh, or the tail and the part with the arrow that's where it ends. So we call that the terminal point or the head of the vector. And we use head to tail for addition and subtraction. But um, yeah, you'll be told what they are. Okay, so back to this. So we have some number and we want to multiply it to a vector. Well, when we multiply a scalar to a vector, we get another vector. And in fact, we just get a vector that's either longer and shorter than the original. It depends. So we call our scalar k. And if k is a positive number, then the vector is going to have the same direction as the original vector. If the scalar that you're multiplying, so maybe you multiply a negative 3 to your vector, then that scalar times the vector is going to cause the vector to take on the opposite direction. I'll show you what that means ge geometrically in a minute. Okay, So again, we, when we multiply by a scalar, we get a new vector. That is the absolute value of k because it's distance uh, times as long as the original vector. So here's a quick example that demonstrates it pretty nicely. We have a vector in component form 2, 3. 
and we have a scalar 2, and we want to find the scalar k times the vector u. Well, all that means is you take the 2, you write it like this, and you're multiplying it to the component form of the vector. Well, guess what? I'm going to do 2 times 2 is 4. And two times, so it's like the distributive property, if you want to think of it. That, it's not the distributive property, but it's sort of like that. So I'm multiplying each component in here by this scalar, and I get the vector 4, 6. And in my little diagram here, the original vector is in dark blue. And when I multiply that by 2, I'm doubling, right? So I expect my new vector to be twice as long as the original. Make sense? see what I have under here. Here's another one. I haven't drawn anything on here, so let me put it like this. So we have this vector b, which is 3, negative 1, and a scalar of 2. So if I multiply 2 to each component here, what I get is positive 6, negative 2, right? So if my original vector the component form. So remember, in the component form, I'm starting always at the origin. It's going to be 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So here's my vector b. And now I'm going to draw the vector 2 times that. So now I'm going to go to 4 and down 1, 2, 3, 4. Oops. So we have 3, negative 1. Oh, sorry, I'm looking at the wrong one. Then we're going to go 6. So 2, 4, 6, negative 2. Then my new vector is here. So you see, I've just doubled the length. In another example, <clears throat> so for this second one, I have a component vector Uh, negative 4, 4, and k is negative 1. So I'm going to plot negative 4, 4. So remember, we start at the origin, go over 1, 2, 3, 4 to the left, and up 1, 2, 3, 4, and this is my terminal point right here. So here's my vector. I'll call it vector v. And now I want to multiply that by a negative 1. So to do that, I'm going to have negative 1 times negative 4, 4, which is going to give me 4, negative 4. So if I plot this vector, I start at the origin. I go over 1, 2, 3, 4, and down 1, 2, 3, 4. Here. This is my terminal point. And there's my new vector after multiplication by a scalar. And you notice the directions, they're going in opposite directions. Okay, So that just reiterates the point that if k is positive, the new vector is going to take on the same direction. And if it's negative, it's going to take on the opposite or go in the opposite direction. Moving right along, we're going to look at adding vectors, okay? And there's an algebraic way to do it, and then there's a geometric way to do it. Yes, I'm going to talk about it now. <laughs> okay, so if we want to add two vectors, all you do is add the components. So if I have vector u and vector v, the component form of vector u and vector v, then to, then to find the sum of those, all I'm going to do is add the corresponding components to get this um, component, and then add u sub 2 and v sub 2 together to get this one. Okay, so little example here with some numbers. So here's vector u and here's vector v. And if I want to add them, I'm just going to add the corresponding components. So 
1 plus 2 for this component, and then 5 plus 3 for this component. And 1 plus 2 gives me 3, and 5 plus 3 gives me 8. Simple. Now, if you're doing it geometrically, which you probably won't, because this is just, you know, a visual for you guys. Most of the time we never do it this way. We really stick to the algebraic aspect. But anyway, to add, you're going to place the vectors head to tail, keeping the same direction. So I could take this. So I don't know, let me get. So here, I'm bending a paper clip. So just pretend with me that this little vector here, this little piece of the paper clip is my vector. And I can, as long as I keep the same direction, I can slide it anywhere I want along the plane. I just got to keep the same direction. Okay. So what we do is we form a triangle. And we're going to, we're going to place those vectors head to tail. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take vector u and I just slid it over here. Okay. Then I'm going to, so here's the tail, here's the head, right? Now I'm going to take the second vector v. Well, I tried to keep the same over here. It doesn't look the same, but anyway, and I'm going to slide it over here and connect them head to tail. And then this resultant vector, so if I finish the triangle by drawing this line, that's called the resultant vector, that's going to be the sum of vector u plus vector v. Now again, you're really not going to have to do this um, hardly at all, but I just wanted to bring it up. Um, that if you had to do it geometrically, what you're doing is you're just connecting these vectors head to tail. I could also start with this one and slide this vector up here and then connect them here, right? Close the triangle and I'd still get u plus v. If you want to subtract, my suggestion to you is to use addition because subtraction for some reason gets really difficult for a lot of kids. So what you have to know that if you have a vector v, then the opposite of it is negative v. So for example, well here I have one here. If v is 1, 2, has components 1, 2, then the opposite of that would be the vector with components negative 1, negative 2. Okay, so I'm just multiplying by a scalar of negative 1 to change it. So I'm just multiplying by negative 1. Okay, and rather than trying to subtract doing this, because that's where for some reason the craziness comes in, all you want to do is change it to an addition problem. So for example, you have vector u, which is 1, 5, and vector v, which is 2, 3, and we want to find the difference, u minus v. So what you want to do is you want to take u and you want to add it to the opposite of v. So in other words, all I'm doing is I'm keeping addition here, and all I'm doing is changing that second vector to the opposite of what it was. So, you know, if this were negative 2, negative 3, it would become 2, 3 here, okay, and so forth. So now if I go ahead and combine my corresponding components, I have 1 minus 2, and 5 minus 3, and 1 minus 2 gives us a negative 1, and 5 minus 3 gives us a positive 2. So just use the subtraction principle um, to get that resultant vector. And again, from a geometric standpoint, no, WebAssign does not make you show the work. However, you are going to have to do the work pretty much to come up with the answers to get the correct answer. And it's important that you do do the work because if you're going to AB calculus next year, you're going to have to show lots of work because you're going to have to show that on the AP exam. So just keep that in mind. Okay, so what I did was I drew the vector 1, 5, right? Initial point 1. Uh, sorry, initial point at the origin, then I went over 1, up 5, put the terminal point and connected those, so there's my vector u. And then vector v was maybe 2, 3, right? So I could go over 2 and up 3 and, and have this here, but I didn't. 
I wanted the opposite of that. So um, remember, if I'm going to add these, I need to multiply that second vector by a scalar of negative 1. So by doing that, I go over negative 2. This should have been down negative 3. So I made a boo-boo. So scratch that. Here, I'll do it in lavender. So over 2, down 3, like this. So scratch this. Okay, and then all I have to do is connect that, close the triangle, and that's going to be u plus v, or u plus negative v. I'll fix that and post it later when SB works. Okay, so just change the second vector to its opposite, the components to its opposite, and you'll be fine. If you have any trouble, let me know. All right. The properties. Now, I don't expect you to write all of these down. There's only a couple that are super important for you to need to know. But vector properties follow most of the properties of real numbers. So the commutative property of addition, for example, it doesn't matter which order, um, which way you add them, you're going to get the same number, right? Or the associative property. Um, the identity, the additive identity. If you add 0 to a vector, you get the same vector back, right? Um, the additive inverse, that's what we just used. So that's important if you have to subtract vectors. And the commutative property for multiplication, um, the distributive property holds, okay? So um, this is just a quick list. This is in your book on page 419, so you can look at those if you want to. But this one is important, so I put a little star there because they said you would be tested on this. And... <clears throat> What I want you to know here is that C is representing a scalar. So when you have the magnitude of some kind of a scalar times a vector, you can take the absolute value, because it's you know distance again, of that scalar out and multiply it to the magnitude of the vector that you're looking for. So again, Instead of k, they're using c, so no big deal. And we're going to let v be the vector 1, 4, okay? or v be the vector whose components are 1, 4, and the scalar is 2. Now, I can multiply that 2 in and get 2, 8, and I can take the magnitude of that combination and get 2 root 17. That okay. Yes, you would con connect the tails and heads of the vectors when you're subtracting. You do do that. So, hang on, let me back up a second. Um, let me find. <clears throat> let me find a. Space where I can write this. So let's just pretend for a second. Um, let's pretend we've got vector u, which is um, has components two, negative four. Okay, so remember it starts at the origin, so I'm going to go over two and down four to find my terminal point. So I'm going to call this vector u. And let's suppose we have a vector v, which is going to have components um, 6, negative 1. So 1, 2, 3, 4. I think this is 6, negative 1. So here's my vector. Sorry about the dog. She hates the mailman. <laughs> So remember, scratch those, we're focusing on this. So here's my vector v, and that's my vector u. And I want to add them together. Maybe I want to do u plus v. Well, I know that u plus v will be 2 comma negative 4 plus 6 comma negative 1. And if I add those together, I'm going to get 2 plus 6 is 8, and negative 4 plus a negative 1 is a negative 5, right? Um, so technically, algebraically, that's what I'm doing. 
oops, sorry. If I'm, so scratch this, if I'm going to connect them, right, I'm going to start with vector u here, so I'm just sliding it over, and then I'm going to, now, v, so, here's my u, okay, I slid it over here to get it out of the way, here's my v, so my v is going something like this, well, that's not true, sorry, okay, so here's u, <laughs> you know, I can't draw, here's u, Okay, and V is kind of like this. And then what I'm going to do, so you always start with the initial point of the first vector and connect to close that triangle. This is going to be U plus V. Ella, stop. Stop. And if I wanted to do subtraction, if I wanted to do U minus V, well, that would be 2, negative 4, plus negative 6, positive 1. So you see I'm just changing the signs there. So the component form would be negative 4, comma, a negative 4 plus 1 is a negative 3. So if I'm subtracting, I would still do head to tail. But the difference is, is that once I've changed this vector here, this vector here, once I've multiplied it by that uh, negative 1, that scalar, then what that's going to do is just change its direction. So if I plot it on the plane, I'm going to go over negative 6 and up 1. So I think this is 6 again. So this is negative v. And so I would say, here's my u, and here's my v, really close together, right? So head to tail. And then I would connect those over here to get u plus a minus v. So I'm still making the triangle. I'm still doing the same thing. I know it was hard. I need. I should have gotten just some blank paper, but I'll do some more on those. But you, you should have the geometric understanding of what's going on. That we're just connecting them head to tail and forming a triangle, and that. That resultant uh, side of the or the the side of the triangle that we add, uh, or to close the triangle, is called a resultant vector that is u plus v or u plus minus v. But you're rarely going to use the geometric aspect for this class anyway to find the sum or the difference. You're mainly going to just add or subtract using algebraic methods. Okay, the properties we can look over later. What I want to do, that we have some time for the homework, is I want to talk about the last thing, which is the direction angle. This is a big topic. I mean, the topic's not big. This is super easy. Um, but it's a big topic in upper math. So what is a direction angle? So pretend my ray is here, this thing that's moving, my pen, okay? And it's lined up. So we just pretend we're starting at the origin. And I can swing a ray all the way around, right? 360 degrees and come back up if I need to. Um, well, that ray can be represented as a vector, a position vector from the origin to some point. And if I, if this is my vector, then I have some angle that's created between the vector and the positive x-axis. So you're measuring these direction angles from between the vector and the positive x-axis theta. That's what we've been doing in trig, right? And we're measuring this counterclockwise as usual, so no difference there. So what I want you to remember is that if you have the point x, y in the plane, the x coordinate corresponds to the cosine of theta and the y coordinate corresponds to the sine of theta. No, head to tail. I connected the heads of the resultant vector, sorry. Um, so Remember that the, the coordinates of the point x, y are cosine and sine, right, from the unit circle. And we know that the tangent of an angle is the sine over the cosine. So we could say that the tangent is just y over x. This is going to be really, really important because this is going to help you find the direction vector. So if you know this formula, you're good to go. So let's look at how this works. You're given two vectors, 3, 3, and 3, negative 4. And you're asked to find the direction angle. The tangent of theta is y over x, right? So 
for the vector u, this is my y and this is my x, so it's 3 over 3 or 1. Now, i got to remember, you know, when is the tangent? At what angle is the tangent equal to 1? Well, we should know by now from our unit circle, hopefully you all have those little unit circle books at home, um, that theta is going to be 45 degrees or pi over 4 if you're working in radians, okay? A vector v, <laughs> sorry, vector v is 3, negative 4. So if I want to find the direction angle for vector v, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to say the tangent of theta is equal to y over x, which I have here. Okay, now again, remember, you're, you're using your calculator, right? Um, to get the degree measure. But what I need you to make sure you do is that you actually draw the vector. Always make the sketch. It's really important because it tells you what quadrant you're in. So by sketching this, 3, negative 4, again, you start at the origin. You go over 3, down 4. You plot your terminal point and you connect them. That's your vector. So my vector is in quadrant 4, so it cannot possibly be equal to 53.13 degrees. That's the issue. So what do we do? We just subtract this number from 360 to find the actual value, which is 306.87 degrees. So again, remember that this direction angle is always between the vector and the positive x-axis. It wouldn't be here. Okay, you could use the reference angle if you wanted to, but remember to get over here, we had to, this is a terrible, uh, we had to spin our pen right around uh, we start at the positive x-axis and we spin counterclockwise. So the angle theta is actually out here. Okay, this is what we're after. This is 53.13 degrees, but this is our angle theta. So you need to be really careful there. And the way to be really careful is to just make a quick sketch of the vector. Are we okay with this so far? Is there anything on here um, other than my drawing of vectors? Um, so I wanted to just say before I close out here, I did connect some vectors. You know what? Let me just get a blank piece of paper. I did connect some vectors head to head. I just want to make sure this is clear. Let's just say I have the vector u, which is um, 3, negative 1. Okay, so 1, 2, 3, negative 1. So here's my vector u. Okay, and then I have maybe a vector v, which is uh, 2, 2. So I go over 2 and up 2. So here's my vector v. Okay, so if we're adding, right, if I want to do u plus v, then we know how to do that algebraically. It's easy. All right, it's 5, 1. But if I want to do it geometrically, I'm going to slide you in the same position that it is. I'm just taking it and sliding it down here. Call it U. And then I'm going to take V and slide it over here. So you see how I'm going head to tail with the second one. And then for the resultant vector, which is where I close the triangle, you always start at the initial point of the first vector and close it to the head of the second. So this is head to head, but this is the resultant vector. And the resultant vector is always u plus v. If I wanted to do u minus v, well, again, algebraically, that would be like this, right? Oops. And in fact, if I were to draw this vector negative v, right, this is u plus the opposite of v, then I would go over 2 and down 2, so 2, 2. So this would be my negative v, if you will. And if I were to do u minus v, that's u plus the opposite of v, then what I would do is, so skip this one for a second. I would take my vector u and slide it down. So here's u. 
same direction. And I would take my vector v, but remember, this is the negative of v. So my vector negative v or opposite of v kind of looks this way. And I would take this and I would slide it here. So this is u, this is negative v. And then what I would do is I would start at the initial of the first and close at the head of the second. So I am going to have that head-to-head -head situation if that's where I confused anybody. What sketch? Did that clear it up with the head-to-head -head thing? I'm sorry, Dominic, but you know, you're going to have to if you get it already, then you don't even have to come to the, you don't have to come to the live stream. Um, as long as um, I can verify that you're working in WebAssign or on ESPY, um, then I can mark you present for attendance. You don't have to um, come to the live review. I'm just doing that for those who need it. So if you're bored, you don't have to stay. I'm just saying, I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying you don't have to stay. I think I even posted that on SB. But anyway, if we're good with this, what I want you to try and do is go to WebAssign now with the remaining time that you have. Go to WebAssign and try and do the homework. If you get stuck, you have questions, post, send me a message. Uh, for today, I would say send me a message through Remind. You should all be on the Remind app by now because EDSB, we've been having some real serious issues with EDSB. Even our work email is down, like nothing wants to work. So um, anyway, the homework um, will come up in your account on WebAssign. If it's not there already, it might be scheduled to show up. Can you guys go into WebAssign real quick? I'm going to go into mine. And um, log into your WebAssign account. I'm going to look at the student view. I don't know if it's there yet. I think I scheduled it for like noon. Let's see. Yeah, at 12 o'clock, it'll open up for you to do work. So you can take a little break. Um, you can, you know, do whatever you want. Go get something to eat. Yeah, okay. Thanks, Christopher. Yeah, it's not posted yet. It's posted. You just can't see it yet. So um, what I'll do is I'll open it up now. No, oh, it won't let me open it up now. So it's going to open up at, um, I think, I'm going to try and open it up now. If it's not up, it'll, it'll be up by noon for sure. And you go in there and you just do the best you can with the problems. If you have questions, please send me a remind text because like I said, Edsby is just not handling the load very well um, today. So no, 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 you don't have to complete homework by today. It's due by the next cycle, just like if we were in class. All right. So, um, no, it's not timed. But what you will see is, for instance, the first question. So there's a total of 54 minutes. You should be able to get the whole assignment done within 54 minutes. But like it tells you on average how many minutes a student should be able to get each question done by. So for the first question, it should take you two minutes to answer that one. For the sixth question, it should take you 14 minutes, no more than 14 minutes to complete it. But if it takes you longer, it's fine. It's not, you're not being graded based on time or whatever. You're being graded based on accuracy. So you're either going to get it right or you're going to get it wrong. And don't fret if you get something wrong. It's okay. As long as you send me a message, either through Edsby or through Remind, that, hey, I need help with this or whatever. Generally, what I'll do, because you're probably not the only one that's got a problem, I will um, go ahead and um, I will make a quick little video on the showing you the whole solution with the explanation, and I'll post the link to um, Edsby or let you know through Remind that I posted it. That way you can see it happen. Okay, so are there any other questions before I close out? 
So Austin, it's not due today. I just said it's due by the next class cycle. So you'll have to finish it by April 1st at like 10 in the morning or something. Look on WebAssign, you'll see. It'll show the due date on there. Anything else pressing? Any other questions? Concerns? You're welcome anytime. And um, gosh, my voice is getting weird. I hope I'm not getting sick. Do you know my neighbor gave me one of those N94 masks? So I actually have the mask, you know. So if I go to the grocery store or something, I'm protected. If you don't have a login for WebAssign, I posted what the WebAssign code is on ESPY now. I don't even know. Let me see. I can get into WebAssign. So let me find the assign or the code for your class. So I'm just going to have to say it. Well, I can write it to, uh, let's see, you're in block one. So I'm block one. I'll fix this in a second. I can't see the screen while I'm in WebAssign, so 3027-5983. Okay, so back to live stream. Oops. Okay, so if you don't have a login for WebAssign, and let me just see if your name's even in there. Let me check the roster real quick. Roster, I have 34 students enrolled. You're in there. Um, so your Gmail account, Jaden, is your account. So you have an account in there. What I would say is go in there and say you forgot your password if that's what you don't remember. Because um, I, I don't have access to your um, password. So go in, say you forgot your password, and that should clear you up. If you have any other problems with that, um, let me know. <laughs> yeah, well, Lauren, I try, but yeah, the assignment is not going to come out till noon. All right, so just take a little break. We're not going to be like sitting in front of the computer 24-7, so um, take a little break, get something to drink, eat, whatever, walk around a little bit, and um, if you go back into WebAssign at noon, you should see that the um, assignment is posted there if you have any questions or it's not or you can't get in like i said go through remind send me a note and i'll work with you to help you capiche uh let's see Jaden. calorie Jaden at gmail yes that's the gmail account So not you gotta stop doing that. It's bad for your health. All right, you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Again, let me know if you have any questions, problems, and I'll be happy to help you. Okay, have a good rest of your day. See you Wednesday.